Hello, my name is Mr. Fallen. Today we're going to look at Module 5, Section 10.1, Linear Equations in one of One Variable. And we're going to be looking at problems 8 through 14 in this video of this homework assignment. Um, so let's look at problem number 8. Here we have 12 plus x equals negative 5. All right, so what we were looking at in the last video, these pro this problem is pretty similar to the previous video we were looking at. So it's similar to problems 1 through 7. We're trying to find the solution to this equation, which is a number that would make this equation true if we were to plug it in to the equation. And we could guess at what the solution might be. We can guess some numbers here until we figure out the one that works. But rather than making a bunch of guesses and hoping that we get it right, instead we're going to manipulate the equation into telling us what the solution is. So the way we do that is getting the variable by itself on one side of the equation. And that's going to be the goal for all of these problems in section 10.1. Excuse me. Um, so here we want to get x by itself. And what's getting in the way is we have this 12 that's being added to the x. Now th this is kind of written backwards from what we're used to seeing. Normally we would have x plus 12. Um, and definitely there's an addition here. But what really kind of dictates whether it's being added or subtracted is whether the 12 is positive or negative. If this was a negative 12, then really the 12 is being subtracted from the x. But because it's a positive 12, it is being added. The plus sign, if this was actually a minus sign here, that would be an issue we'd have to deal with in another way, which we will get to. I don't know if it's going to be in this section, but eventually we'll see equations where we have to multiply and divide. And that's how you deal with a minus sign in front of the x. But really what decides whether the 12 is being added or subtracted is the sign of the 12. So it's a positive 12, which means it's being added to x. I want to reverse that so that I could cancel it out so x can be by itself. So to reverse an adding of 12, we will subtract 12. If we do that to the left-hand side, we have to do the same thing to the right-hand side. So here the x gets copied down. We're not doing anything to alter that. The positive 12 and the minus 12 will cancel each other out. And on the right-hand side, we'll combine these numbers together. They're both negative, so be careful about that. We have negative 5 minus 12, which will be negative 17. And that will be the solution. And here we get the equation to tell me the solution. I didn't have to guess negative 17. The equation gladly tells me what the answer is when I move some things around. All right, let's take a look at number nine all right sorry about all the clicking i have to make some changes in order to you know erase i have to erase the work i just did then i have to change it to the cursor setting so i can click to the next problem then i change it back to pin so i apologize for the delays there all right so number nine is really the same kind of problem the only difference this time is the variable that we're trying to find the solution for is on the right-hand side of the equation instead of the left-hand side. But that really is not an issue at all. It doesn't matter where we get the variable by itself. We can get the variable by itself on the left-hand side of the equation or on the right-hand side of the equation. Either way is fine. So we're just going to leave S over here on the right-hand side, but I need to get rid of the plus 11. I do that by subtracting 11. I'm going to reverse that operation, right? The reverse of adding 11 is to subtract 11. If I do that to the right-hand side, I have to do the same thing to the left-hand side to balance that out. So on the right-hand side, we'll be left with S. That'll be the um, only thing that remains. Uh, and then on the left-hand side, we'll have 7 minus 11, which is negative 4. And we could just leave it like this. Negative 4 equals S is the same thing as S equals negative 4. It has the same meaning. And either way, it tells us what the answer is, which is negative 4. And that's what you'd want to type into the box here on Math Excel. All right. Let's take a look at number 10. Oopsies, I keep forgetting to go back to cursor format. All right. Oh, so this time we have some fractions again. So negative 2 over 7 equals y minus 1 half. Now we saw one of these kind of examples in the previous video. I can't remember. I think it was number 5 in the homework. This is going to work the same way. Again, the only difference here is that the variable is on the right-hand side. But we just talked about that in the last example. That has no 
um, that causes no complications for us. We, it doesn't matter where the variable ends up. It can be on the left-hand side of the equation. It can be on the right-hand side of the equation. And we get the solution either way. So we'll just leave y on the right-hand side, but we need to get rid of the minus 1 half. The way we cancel out a minus 1 half is by adding 1 half. We do the reverse. We do the opposite operation. The opposite of subtracting is to add. So I'm going to add 1 half. I do the same thing to the left-hand side because I have to keep my equation balanced out. On the right-hand side of the equation, the 1 halves cancel out, so we are left with only y, which is what our goal was. We wanted to get y by itself. Now it is. On the left-hand side, we just want to combine these numbers together just like we did in the last example, but we're going to have to take our time with it because, again, we have fractions. So in order to add fractions together, we have to have a common denominator, which is a number, a common number, that both denominators can be multiplied up to. And so unfortunately, I can't take the 2 and multiply it up to a 7. And that, there's no easy number to multiply by to make the 2 into a 7. So what we need to do is find a common number that both of them can be multiplied to. And for 7 and 2, we can multiply them both up to 14. I can make the 7 into a 14 by multiplying by a 2. And if I do that to the bottom of that fraction, I have to do the same thing to the top. And I can multiply the 2 to a 14 by multiplying by 7. If I do that to the bottom, I have to do that the same thing to the top as well. Right? So if I multiply 7 to the bottom of this fraction, I also have to multiply 7 to the top. So I'm going to rewrite these fractions down here on one line. So I'll start with this first fraction here. It's negative, so I'll have negative. 2 times 2 is 4 on top. 7 times 2 is 14 on the bottom. Plus, because we're adding, 1 times 7 is going to be 7 on top. And 2 times 7 will be 14 on the bottom. Now that they have the same denominator, I can add these together. The denominator will stay the same. The denominator doesn't change when you add fractions to one another. And where the adding takes place is in the numerator. So I'm going to take, don't forget the negative sign here. We have negative 4 plus 7. Negative 4 plus 7 will be positive 3. And so I get y is equal to 3 over 14. Don't forget when your answer comes out as a fraction to try to reduce the answer. In my particular example, I got an answer that couldn't be reduced, but that may not happen for you. So you might get something like 4 over 14. Well, that can be reduced to 2 over 7. Right? You divide a 2 out of the top and the bottom, and you reduce it. So make sure you reduce the fraction. Um, this one doesn't reduce. All right, so that's number 10. Let's take a look at number 11. All right, so finally we're getting something a little bit with a little bit of a different flavor here. All of these problems in section 10.1, I didn't really do my research ahead of time, but what's clear to me is that these are all focused on adding and subtracting the same thing to both sides of an equation. So that's all we're going to be doing in this section. You shouldn't have to do any multiplying or dividing in section 10.1. At least that's how it appears to me. This problem is quite a bit different than the previous problems we were doing, though, because we have x in two different places. We have x on the left-hand side, and we also have x on the right-hand side. You are not going to be able to solve your equation while you still have x on both sides of the equation. So our first task here is to get x to one side of the equation. We don't want it to be on both sides of the equation, which means typically the way most people do it is let's just have x on the left-hand side of the equation. That means I don't want x to be on the right-hand side of the equation. I don't want this 3x here. It doesn't. I don't want it to be on the right-hand side. So I want to get rid of it. To get rid of the 3x over here on the right-hand side, it's being added to the 1, so I can cancel it out by subtracting 3x from the right-hand side. 3x minus 3x cancels out. It'll equal 0, and that leaves the 1 by itself. If I do this to the right-hand side, however, i got to do the same thing to the left-hand side. So it's the same principle we were using earlier, except now we're using it on a term that contains x. A lot of people look at this operation and think, okay, I'm moving the 3x to the left-hand side, and it changes sign. I, I talk about it that way sometimes, but that really isn't mathematically what's going on here. So what really what we did is we wanted to get rid of x from the right-hand side, so we cancel it out by reversing the operation. We subtracted it in this case. 
But because we did that to the right hand side, we have to do the same thing to the left hand side. That's why it shows up over here. So I'm not really moving it over there. I'm eliminating it from one side and it just pops up on the other side. So we go ahead and combine like terms. We have 4x minus 3x, 4 minus 3 is 1, and then the variable part stays the same. So we have 1x, which the 1 doesn't really need to be written there. And on the right hand side, since the 3x is canceled out, we'll just have the positive 1 get copied down. But because it's positive, I don't need to bring the plus sign with it. Right? So it's just going to be 1. Positive 1 is just 1. 1x should just be written as x, as I mentioned. And so we have our solution. x is equal to 1. And so that's what you would type into the box here. All right. Let's take a look at the next problem, number 12. I imagine it'll look very similar to that, maybe with a negative sign thrown in there or something. So well, no negative signs either. All right. So here we have 5x plus 2 equals 6x. Now what's different about this problem is that instead of getting x by itself on the left hand side like we did in the last example it's going to be easier for us if we get x by itself on the right hand side right? so remember in the earlier examples we did in this video we can solve for x on either side of the equation we could get x by itself on the left hand side or the right hand side it's fine doesn't matter which side of the equation we isolate the variable to and so you just do whatever is going to be easier uh, so in this case it'll be easier to get rid of x from the left hand side so that it gets isolated on the right hand side so it's just on the right hand side of the equation right. so let's get rid of this 5x we could do that by subtracting a 5x that's what we'll cancel that out if we subtract 5x from the left hand side we have to subtract 5x from the right hand side as well so the 5x is cancel out we'll have a positive 2 remaining on the left hand side the plus sign doesn't need to be written in front of the 2 it's assumed to be positive if we don't put a sign there and then 6x minus 5x, combining those together, 6 minus 5 is 1. Just like on the last example, we don't have to write the 1 there, so I'm going to skip writing that. But the variable part stays the same. So we'll have 1x, the 1 is just going to be invisible. And that gives us our solution. Right? x is equal to 2. So 2 is equal to x, x is equal to 2 means the same thing. Let's take a look at number 13. All right. And math Excel is going a little bit slow for me today. Um, I know that a lot of you have to deal with that on a frequent basis. All right. Here we have 4x minus 3 equals 3x. All right. So this one looks very similar to the last one. And I'm, I, I hesitate to do it in the same way. Because if I subtract 4x, let's just kind of look at how that's going to look. Right? Let's just take a look at that. Um, if I subtract 4x over here to cancel out the 4x, so that I'm getting x on the right-hand side, getting rid of it from the left-hand side, what's going to happen here is I get 3 minus 4, which will not be equal to 1. This will actually equal negative 1. And then x will stay the same. And we haven't talked about how to deal with that negative sign in front of x. You, you may already know how to do it, and if so, that's fine. You could go ahead and do the problem this way. But officially, we haven't done any examples where we deal with a number in front of x like we have here. What you would do is divide by negative 1 on both sides to get rid of that negative 1. But I'm trying to avoid doing that. So while this might be the best way to solve this equation, I don't want to deal with this negative 1 in front of the x. I'm trying to keep positive numbers in front of it. In fact, I'm trying not to keep have any numbers at all. I just want to have x by itself. And so what I'm going to do in this case instead, even though this might not be the best way to do it, and you might have other ideas, which probably are fine, I'm going to subtract the 3x from the right-hand side. So let's get rid of x from the right-hand side by subtracting 3x. That'll cancel it out. I do the same thing to the left-hand side. And by doing it this way, I keep a positive 1 in front of x, so I don't have to deal with dividing a number to the other side. That's the only reason I'm doing it this way. So I'll get 4x minus 3x, which will be x. The minus 3 is still here. We're going to copy that down. Even though we canceled out the right-hand side, we still have an equation, so we still want to write the equal sign here. And because the 3x got canceled out and there's nothing left over here, we put a placeholder of 0. 
So if you completely cancel it out, you still need to write something there. There's still a right-hand side to the equation, so we put a zero there as a placeholder. And now that we have it like this, it's pretty similar to the problems we were doing at the beginning of this section. We still want to get x by itself, so we want to cancel out the minus 3. We do that by adding 3. If you do that to the left-hand side, you do the same thing to the right-hand side. And so the x here gets copied down. The 3s here cancel out. 0 plus 3 is going to equal 3. And we get our solution. And that way I avoid having to deal with a negative sign in front of the x. All right. Let's take a look at number 14. All right. Ooh, this one looks terrible. All right. So we have 7 over 4r minus 8 equals 3 over 4r. Now it looks pretty bad, but because we haven't talked about how to deal with numbers in front of the variable, what's going to have to happen here is the fractions are going to have to behave nicely enough that we just get 1 in front of the r. And we want to make sure we keep it as a positive 1 so we don't have to deal with that negative sign. And so I can see in this case to make that happen, we're going to have to do the same thing we did in the last example. We will subtract the 3 fourths r on the right-hand side to cancel it out so that we don't have r on the right-hand side. We do the same thing to the left-hand side. And they already have a common denominator, which is really nice. So we can just go ahead and subtract these fractions. We have 7 over 4 r minus 3 over 4 r. So we'll take 7 over 4 minus 3 over 4. The denominator will stay the same. It'll be 4. And then 7 minus 3 is going to be 4. The variable part stays the same, so we copy that down, copy that down, excuse me. The minus 8 hasn't changed, so we also copy that down. And then we, it's an equation still, so we still need the equal sign. I see students all the time that when the right-hand side gets canceled out, they stop writing the equals to, and then they get lost on what they're supposed to be doing. Right? This kind of helps keep us on track. We're trying to solve an equation, so let's keep the equal sign there. And because the right-hand side got completely canceled out, we need to use a placeholder of 0 for the right-hand side. 4 over 4, 4 divided by 4, is just 1. So this is really just 1r minus 8 equals 0. To get the r by itself, we will add 8 to both sides of the equation. That cancels out the minus 8. We'll just continue up here. 1r, we don't really need to write the 1. It's just r now. r by itself equals 0 plus 8, which is going to be 8. So the minus 8 and the plus 8 cancel each other out. That's what happened to that. All right. So that's problem number 14. We'll continue the rest of the homework in the next video.